Hello, Zero K fans! This is Jedi Fury 33 bringing you the first stream of the new year! I was supposed to do this yesterday, but I apologize. I'm still kind of recovering from New Year's party, but I am feeling much better now, so we can do it today. Yeah, this is going to be a game between Lowry and Flipstep on Comic Catcher Redux, and apparently it is a very long, interesting game. So get your popcorn, everyone. This is an official popcorn warning. Get it now. This is gonna be a long game. Got your popcorn? Okay, good, done. Let's get started. So, Comic Catcher Redux is a massive map. This is this is the whole map. Let's zoom in slightly. Yeah, as you can see, everything's also two into eight. Very even metal distribution, and it's also a lot of metal. There's about twenty metal spots for each side safely, and then another twenty or so in the center. I'm not even counting. That's just a broad estimate. And. Might as well start. This, this, as should be suggested by the fact that the map is a very flat map, is a map that favors vehicles and tanks and hovercrafts, although we don't see hovercrafts this game. A little bit surprising. Lowry tends to really enjoy hovercrafts, so if Lowry's not using hovercrafts, then hovercrafts might not be that great in this map. Not sure. Lowry just loves hovercrafts, so they're, they're typically the first to use them if anyone's going to use them on a map. But this, this time we see light vehicles. Loud bank building a lot of darts for scouting, while Flipstep, on the other hand, gets a single dart and then sets up Masons for expansion, playing much more defensively. So Lowry, not playing that much more offense. Oh wait, no, no, no. Lowry is that's a Mason. Yeah, Lowry is playing much more, much more from the information that they can get, and this is a really good strategy. The size of this map means that getting information about what's going on is difficult. Having a lot of darts go around is extremely useful. Darts are very quick. They're fairly frail, but they are very quick, very cheap. Great scouts. Even if they die, you aren't feeding your opponent that much metal. And the information you get is that much more valuable. Because you aren't wasting metal for it. Anyway, Flipstep does see Lowry before Lowry sees Flipstep. Both players now know that the other one is going for light vehicles. And Flipstep going for a little bit of harassment too, because why not? Can't really get in here. The the Lotus is going to kill that... Actually, once this power solar collector is dead, the dart's dead, but... Certainly can't go after the metal extractor, there's nothing in the way for the Lotus. Because right now, the Solar Collector is blocking the line of sight for the Lotus. And at the same time, Lowry coming into Flipstep's base does get hit by Flipstep's Lotus. Loses, oh, doesn't quite lose one of the darts yet. And actually able to get a safe, nice safe location on that metal extractor. Not able to kill it though. Flipstep Scorcher comes in way too fast, but still, that was a good position. You always want to do that, you always want to make sure that your units are behind something else. If there's defenses, you want to make sure something is blocking their line of sight, but you can still get targets. So Flipstep right now is not in the best position. The Metal Extractor here is not defended by the Lotus. However, the Scorchers did just fine, so Flipstep's okay. Lowry, on the other hand, they don't have to worry about anything at all right now. They have their Metal Extractors defended by the Lotus. The Solar Collector not so much, but the Solar Collector has a lot of health. So it has no real concern. Flipstep, however, coming in for a bit of a raid and will be hitting the commander. Won't be able to do anything much with them. The commander will kill it. The commander right now is upgraded, does have light particle beam. Flipstep, on the other hand, have they upgraded their commander? I'm pretty sure they have. Yes, they have. Beam laser, radar module, and setting up radars around the map. So right now, we see that Flipstep is... Actually... Does Lowry have... Yeah, Lowry and Flipstep both have radar, but Flipstep is a bit more forward. So Flipstep does have a bit more knowledge about what's going on right now. However, it doesn't really matter, neither player has knowledge of what's going on inside the other's base, regard despite what they're, sorry, other than what their units see. The radar doesn't help, but Lowry does see where these Scorchers are coming in, and the Scorchers are dealing quite a bit of damage, getting rid of a couple of the metal extractors right off the bat. Scouting this, this is a good area to scout too, Flips to just double checking this particular corner. Surprised they're not checking this corner, however. This corner is a little bit easier to take. I've, often you see people start here, actually, in team games. One-on-one, -on -one, though, where Lowry and Flipstep started is pretty typical. Yeah, Flipstep just double-checking some of the more lucrative sections of the map and does not see any metal extractors. Lowry is apparently trying to take this area here and then move back after having secured the territory all the way up from here, which is a prudent move. A little bit aggressive, but on the map this size, it's really not that aggressive at all. It's not that it's not very risky to do this, but it does mean that they can take these metal extractors with impunity. Once these are taken, these will follow. However, Flipstep continuing to harass from all sides. Lowry coming in with a bit of counter harassment, only one scorcher compared to four or five from Flip yes, yeah, one dart and four scorchers. 
to over here, just about to get rid of this Lotus and get rid of the attendant metal extractor. And that, okay, maybe I'll get rid of that metal extractor, damage it slightly. I'm gonna try to get rid of it, but... Oh, there we go. Does get rid of the metal extractor. Gets kill as well. And the other Scorcher... The other Scorchers get completely blocked back, dealing no damage whatsoever. Killing one of Lowry Scorchers, but that's about it. Why is this... Well, that's just perfect. Sorry guys, I apparently somehow cannot turn the economy view off. <sighs> Sorry about that. Not sure why that just happened, but it did. Okay, why is it... Excuse me one second, I'm, I apologize, I just do need to change this. All right. <sighs> Sorry about that. Back to the game. Oops. <laughs> okay, so anyway. So, back to normal. We don't have the economy view everywhere. I can turn it off. So, Flipstip is going to be... We continue to harass. Flipstip is being very aggressive, and at the moment, I think Flipstip may just be donating metal. They do have a slight military advantage, but only slightly. And a slight economic advantage, but even then they're... And a slight pathfinding disadvantage, because we are playing in the old region that has terrible pathfinding, unfortunately, for vehicles. And because of that, Flipstep loses the entire harassment force. I don't know if Flipstep was paying attention to that at all, but that... That looked painful. And that... That's just three scorches completely wasted because they got stuck on a rock. That happens from time to time. The more up-to-date engine doesn't have that issue, but there's there are reasons why we haven't jumped to that one yet. Hopefully those will be resolved fairly soon. We can jump to the latest engine, but at the moment it's not an option, I'm afraid. Anyway, Flipstep is going to be just building up... Well, they got everything set up. I mean, both players have basically queued up every single metal extractor. This is a common thing to see. Yeah, Laudy has a bunch in the center that this particular worker will not successfully build. And a few more that are being built up by the commander, and... Well, maybe not. But yes, they are... Every single metal extractor has been accounted for by both players. Typical thing for Comic Catcher, this, this is a map that is going to be focused very much on getting as much economy as possible. The players are not going to be... I mean, there has been quite a lot of harassment going on early on. That's kind of trying just to make sure, if it's possible, win in the first 5-10 minutes. Because after that, it's going to be about 20-30 minutes of economic fighting. Just... Macro warfare, building as many units as you can, sending out armies, being careful where you send the armies, but not super careful what you do with the individual units. That'll start up in about four minutes or so, like five to ten minutes, I'd say. That's when it's going to really start in earnest. For now, though, both players are just setting up as many metal extractors as they can. Getting a strong amount of economy as they can, making sure neither of them falls behind the other. And thus, a little bit of harassment is expected, as... They do want to make sure that their opponent is not expanding too much. If their, if their opponent is expanding and they're not expanding, or their opponent damages their expansions, then no, they get an economic lead as a result, which translates to a military lead, which Loudly actually has at the moment, but only 3k, or sorry, 0.3k, 300 metal worth of additional units, which is basically this army of Scorchers. So once this army of Scorchers dies, then it's actually going to be about even, as, as we can see. And Flipstep making sure Lowry cannot get past the midpoint. This is, of course, what both players have to do. Both players have to make sure that the other player cannot really expand past the midpoint, which is about here. Oops. About here. If they allow for that, then it's going to be much harder for them to win, because they're going to have less territory, has to rely more on overdrive, and they, of course, will have just overall less metal. We saw in the game between Flipstep and... Sorry, I think it was Flipstep and Lowry, on... Fields of Isis that Overdrive can make up for lack of metal. However, Flipstep's commander being destroyed eight minutes into the game already. Flipstep having their economy damaged heavily as a result. Not super heavily yet, I mean, considering that it is 54. So Flipstep's economy is damaged by about a tenth. Not the biggest deal, but at this point, both players are neck and neck, yet Lowry is actually slightly behind. And both players simultaneously going for an air switch to the 828 mark. Both players are also well prepared for this, and like I said, the players are still economically even. Flipstep, despite having lost their commander, is economically even, so Flipstep's actually ahead in metal extractors constructed so far. 
Lowry looks to be relying a bit more on overdrive, whereas, as we can see, Liftup is naked expanding everywhere. Lowry has power plants across their entire territory. And they're going to be linking them up, and when they do, that is going to be somewhat more powerful. Like, Lowry already getting an early fusion reactor. Flipstep, on the other hand, is relying entirely on solar plants. Yeah, just everywhere solar plants. They do have a pylon to connect in inside their main area, inside the starting area. But Lowry's going to be building up pylons and building up power plants across the entire north side. Possibly across the entire map, as much as they can. Lowry will do that. That's what Lowry does. They just build up their overdrive networks, and that's that's something you have to be careful about when fighting Lowry. Like, Lowry knows how to use overdrive and will use it completely. Which means, even if you take all the territory, you still have to be very, very mindful of how much metal Lowry actually has. It does mean that harassing Lowry when it's later in the game and they do have a lot of pylons and a lot of overdrive is very powerful, since you are going to be able to kill metal extractors that are giving them, like, plus five, rather than just plus two. However, that's something they're going to have. They're going to have metal extractors giving them plus five. That is a big deal. So it's very important to keep that in mind. And Flipstep coming in first, attacking first with the bombers. Ravens coming in here, getting rid of a Stardust. Good choice of target, however. Swifts are going to try to take out one of the Ravens. Take out one of the Ravens. Second Raven might go down, however. It's probably going to... Yeah. Intercept by Flipstep Swifts. There we go. Flipstep actually able to take... Ma are they going to take air control? I think they can take air control. No, Lowry is continuing to build up quite a few swifts, so air control is not going to be taken quite so easily. However, destroying that Stardust was a very good move. That opens up the entire area that Scorchers can easily go in here. I mean, they are going to be opposed by Lowry Scorchers, but at least they're not going to be opposed by a Stardust, which would have killed most of them. Either just by its weapon, or in the death explosion that would have followed it after killing it. One way or the other, those Scorchers would have died. Those Ravens did a good job. Anyway, over on the east side of the map, we do have some Swiss harassing the incoming Scorch, or Prana defending is the incoming Scorcher harassment. Getting rid of some of Flip, sorry, sorry, some of Lowry's workers. Flipstep losing some Scorchers, actually being put in a very awkward position. Lowry having their forces between Flipstep's and Flipstep's base. Managing to deal a lot of damage, breaking through Flipstep's lines and into their base. Half a dozen Scorchers. The Ravens are going to come in to try to help out, but they're only going to kill one Scorcher each. If that. But still, they do manage to do this. Regardless, five Scorchers remain. Continue to go through. Over the east side of the map, the Swifts are taking air control for Lowry. In the north side of the map, we have more forces from Lowry coming to reinforce the harassment. And over here, the harassment is continuing apace, getting rid of another Mason, getting rid of more metal extractors, getting rid of plenty of these. Another bomber to come in, another Scorcher to die. But there has been a lot of damage dealt from this. Like about five metal extractors have been destroyed. And Leveler, to finish this off, Flipstep finally defends against this, but at the same time has lost air control. Or very nearly lost air control. They're going to try to regain it right now. But these Swifts were put in a very bad position. Lowry, however, is still escaping and is going to lose a couple Swifts in the process. However, this is this is still Lowry's air game. Flipstep has taken more of the ground, though. As you can see, Flipstep has crossed that midline. But Lowry, on the other hand... They've gotten their overdrive going. Already got plus four on what should be plus point plus two point three three. And Flipstep does need to rebuild these internal metal extractors. That's a lot of the economic disparity is the fact that the internal metal extractors have been destroyed. Granted, a lot of it is overdrive. That's like I said, that's gonna be a big deal. Flipstep has basically no overdrive, and Lowry has tons. And they have at least one fusion. How many fusion reactors are there? Okay, actually. Come to think of it, no, Flipstep has more fusion reactors. Lowry just has more power plants overall. And has them connected better, has a better overdrive grid, and as a result has a better metal economy. And also is getting a lot of reclaim. Which Flipstep is now finally getting into. Reclaiming their commander, and... That's about it. At this point, further attempts to harass by Flipstep being completely rebuffed. Losing all the... Oh man, it's 900 metal worth... 900 metal worth of bombers lost for basically free. Okay, a couple Swifts go down in the process thanks to this... Where was that, anyway? Oh, the Defenders, of course, the four Defenders. Right, of course, Defenders are anti-air! Yeah, I always see... Playing smaller maps as I typically do, generally Defenders are used more often just to get rid of... You use them to get rid of Glaives or get rid of Bandits or just generally defend an area. 
They are meant to be for anti-air, but they're so useful for anti-raider that that's what you typically see them for. Still, they are an anti-air unit. That is a thing. That's what they do. Or at least anti-light air. Generally, Razor or Hacksaw... Oh, sorry, not Hacksaw, what am I saying? No one uses Hacksaw. Razor or Chainsaw is what you see for dedicated anti-air. However, flips up continuing to cross the midline, continuing to harass out, and continuing to get a lot of damage dealt here. I mean, this is... The amount of damage being dealt by a flip step, it's actually a little bit surprising that their economy is still behind. And they are rebuilding, they are getting their metal extractors back up, they still have a couple that haven't been rebuilt, well, one that hasn't been rebuilt. This one is being built for the first time. And more harassment coming in, I think Lowry really is just getting a lot of reclaim as a result of this harassment. But flip step is taking this eastern side, they are pushing in, their line is pushing considerably along the eastern front. The western side, not so much. The western side, Lowry is taking that, but even then, the western side is not past the midline for Lowry. Flipstep is past the midline. And they have damaged a lot of stuff within Lowry's territory even then. Of course, the only downside is all these Swifts. There are a lot of Swifts here. About 20 Swifts belonging to Lowry alone, let alone Flipstep. Flipstep has their own Swifts, but not as many, and Flipstep has been losing them in very large numbers. The Hawks come in to try to help, but these Hawks are going to go down in these next two volleys. Both Hawks go down, and more Swifts as well. These Ravens need to get out of the way. The only hope to get rid of these Swifts is ground-based anti-air. Like either Defender Nests or, well, Razor coming up. That that will do the trick. Or at least it'll help out quite a bit. And more Scorcher Harassment coming in, but Lowry well prepared for this. Doesn't let it do any damage. Now all we need to see is if there's any Mason's coming in, because I'm not sure where Lowry is reclaiming. Oh, they're reclaiming around from the center. That's where all their reclaim is. So at this point, we are not quite to the point where Reclaim is going to decide everything, but due to the fact that most of the Metal Extractors not yet taken have are in very contested areas, yeah, Reclaim is basically what's determining Metal at this point. But still fairly even. However, Lowry is, as we can see, about two and a half times ahead for military. Most of the military might, of course, being Swifts. 28 Swifts, all of them belonging to Lowry. But that is still a massive military difference. The Scorchers as well. How many Scorchers does... How many Scorchers are there on the map? 31 Scorchers, and it looks like all but three belong to Lowry. Wow. Or at least 21 belong to Lowry. And, of course, Lowry still has their commander, which is under very little threat. So yeah, Lowry... It's going to take a lot for Flipster to get out of this. I mean, Flipster does have a territory advantage, which is good. Economy, actually, they have a major advantage, which is also good. Production, they are not going to work. I mean, Lowry has a heavy tank factory on top of the others. They've gone for heavy tanks, which already have... They already have eight Reapers. They're just bearing down. How did I not notice this before? They already have eight Reapers bearing down. Strider cost worth of Reapers. This is where most of the military disparity is. While Flips up, on the other hand, focusing entirely on the Light Scorchers, which aren't doing much damage. I mean, they might help out a little bit, but this is not going to be easy to get out of. All they can do is try to push back these Reapers, try to make sure they don't deal any meaningful damage. Which is a little bit tricky. Reapers are very damaging units, very expensive units, and Flipstep, like I said, has a massive military disadvantage. Not sure what they're going to do beyond this, though. They do, wow. Singularity react on top of that, too. Does, do both of them have sinews? Not sure. Anyway, the Reapers have been pulled back. Lowry is still building up, and... Flipstep getting a lot of pylons going. Lowry, not so much, but Flipstep now getting into the recl the overdrive game, and very strongly as well. There you have the plus five metal extractors. Not Lowry. Lowry's metal extractors are only at plus four. But more fusion reactors being built up. Lowry just trying to get back into that game, or that part of the game. But Flipstep able to hold off the Reapers well enough that they continue, continue to expand, continue to push territory, or at least continue to harass. This entire e eastern corridor is basically, well, it's no, no robots land at the moment, but it's so much reclaim. No one's going for this at all. I don't know if Lowry has, Lowry does have radar coverage, as does Flipstip. So neither player can really start trying to reclaim there, unless this radar, if this radar is killed. If this radar is killed, Flipstip will be able to take this entire area's reclaim. But I don't know if that radar is going to be killed. That is the key difference. That is the key thing that needs to be done. And Lowry, from the looks of it, is not going to lose it at all. Nope. 
Flipsif not even going for that, not, probably not realizing that this radar exists, or at least not realizing just how much of an impact it'll have. Not sure if they even are thinking about taking that reclaim. It looks like the most of the reclaim fields they're trying to take are the ones in the center. And building up an Annihilator, because why not? At this stage in the game, why not build an Annihilator? Gets rid of the Reapers pretty- or should get rid of the Reapers decently quickly. It's not going to kill him in one shot. It'll kill him in two shots! 4,000 damage each, yeah, for a 6,800 health unit. That's two-shot kill on the Reapers. On the other hand, Lowry, what are they- how are they escalating? I mean, they had the Heavy Tank Factory, which they aren't building with anymore. They're just building entirely light vehicles. But they must be building something. They have 153 metal income. There's got to be something they can build. I mean, I don't see it though. They're reclaiming. Reclaiming as much as they can. Reclaiming this, as much of this corridor as they can. Because like I said, Flipsip only has vision up to about here. Or radar up to about there. But Flipsip continuing to push forward. I mean, this western side here, this defender nest, that's the only thing that's really standing in Flipsip's way. If that's destroyed, and especially if the commander's destroyed on top of that, there's nothing building up beyond here. This is naked expansion. It's just this this field. That defender field. Given what they have, and they're going for a heavy tank factory as well. Wolverines might work, or pillagers might work. Or there's another one. Oh, Tremor. Tremor would actually be the thing to use here. That's what you want to see. If Flipstep makes a Tremor and destroys this defender nest, they can take the western side as well. They've already very nearly taken the eastern side. The Leveler's taking out these Welders for basically free. Taking some damage here and there, but not all that much. Levelers are strong enough units. So that's all this reclaim gone down. Pile on for, for no resistance. But at the same time, we do have 10,000 metal worth of Reapers and Ravagers bearing down in the center of the map. The Annihilator getting possibly torn to shreds. It's going to do what it can. It's going to kill as many things as it can, but it's not targeting what it needs to. And it is going to go down. Annihilator goes down, killing nothing, and loudly pushing in very strongly with these Reapers and Ravagers. Tearing apart this front line, cutting a very nice swath here, because, like I said, Lowry, while they have been ahead militarily, they have not had territory. At all. And a lot of that military disparity has just been the choice of units from Flipstip. But Flipstip has had the economic advantage as well, and that was a... That was a fairly big blow, but without a follow-up, Lowry is not confident they can tear apart the rest of this base. Falling back, repairing, regrouping, and baiting out some of these ravens to come in, but... Well, I would say baiting, except they aren't actually getting killed in the process. They aren't even getting damaged in the process. Where are Lowry's Swifts? I suppose the chainsaws destroyed them all while I was dealing with the northeast here. It appears that the chainsaws have destroyed all of Lowry's Swifts, giving Flipstep quite a lot of power. Although, admittedly, chainsaws are going to be also decimating all of Flipstep's forces, so neither player really has much in the way of air. And it appears a Big Bertha has been built. I can't... Ah, there it is. Yeah, Big Bertha has been built. Trying to get rid of these metal extractors. Not sure why it's targeting that. What is the Big Bertha range? Yeah, it really should be targeting here. Why the Bertha is not targeting this area here, where it's much easier to hit, and it's also going to be a lot more damage? I don't know. Lowry does not seem to know what's actually in this area. They just see some units over here, and I'm assuming that they aren't actually... Oh, that would be why, because if you look at what they know, they know their stuff here, but they don't... Well, they should know what it is. They should know what some of it is. Not sure if they know where the factories are, though. That's probably not the case. Yeah, okay, there we go. The Bertha's now going for attacks all where it needs to. You can see it is on kind of a cute attack pattern. It just happened to be attacking over the east first. But now attacking in a more useful direction. And now hitting the heavy tank factory. So at this point, Flipstep has has major artillery to worry about. This is something we don't usually see in 1v10k games, but CCR is not usual 1v10k. It is much heavier economy, as you can see both players in the nearly 200 metal range. That's what I mean. That That's how different this is. Normally, you don't see player economies go above 40. Well, plus 40 for metal at least. This, pretty typical to see them up to plus 150, plus 200. Especially once you get 20 minutes in. And Lowry going for yet another push, supported by the Big Bertha. Got a nice little rolling barrage going here, but I don't know if there's enough. It unfortunately didn't really hit much. And also, the entire point of the rolling barrage was more as a distraction, and there's no smoke mechanic or something like that in 0K, so there's no easy way to distract a, a set of units from being able to hit accurately. 
Regardless, Lowry could still push. I mean, they could actually push and win. They're just not confident they can actually do so. And... Yeah, Singularity here. And a single No! A per okay, Anti-Nuke coming in from Lowry. They suspect that Flipstep's gonna go for a nuke. This is a bit of a bad read. Flipstep is actually not going for a nuke at all. They do not have any silencers being built. They do have a Strider Hub being built. Or they have a Strider Hub, but it's not actually building anything. There's no real Striders on the field at the moment. It does exist, though. If they wanted to build a Strider, they could do so at their leisure. But they have no plans to do so. And... Oh, never mind. That actually was a really good read. <laughs> okay. So, Lowry calling it in advance. And flips up going for the Silencer. But Lowry's already gone for the Anti-Nuke. So... R for forget what I said about being a bad read. That was actually a wonderful read. That was a perfect read. Lowry knows ex Lowry has Flipsip's number. Now exactly what Flipsip's going to do here. All they need to do is make sure that they actually get nuked where they expect to get nuked. I mean, if they set up an anti nuke here as well. Actually, no. This is the most. This is the most important spot. This. There's nothing else that's really going to be that likely to be attacked. However, the question is, is Flipsip going to just fire one nuke and hope for the best, or are they going to wait until several nukes can be fired? Setting up an ultimatum on top of that, Flipsip has that being built. And they are going for their own Goliath army, not Reaper army. Well, Banisher and Goliath in the looks of it. The Banisher, Goliath, yeah. Two Goliaths and a Banisher. Trying to deal with Flipsip's army by way of type counter, effectively. Don't see this working especially well. Get got rid of a couple of copperheads nicely, but copperheads are not really the banishes are really the anti air for heavy tanks. Not so much copperheads. Copperheads can do a decent job against lighter and against lighter air, but against bombers and such. Banishers, banishers are the anti air to use. But at this point, the center is so heavily contested. Lowry's not even bothering with it. Why not go around to the side along their strong side? Because we, as we've shown before. The west side is the strong side, the east side is Flipstep's strong side. Actually, Flipstep is now taking that corridor, despite Lowry knowing what's... Oh no, Lowry doesn't know what's there. Lowry lost radar coverage. Okay, there we go. So that radar was destroyed, and Flipstep is taking this corridor. Being very bold about it, but that's exactly what they need to do. Now they did just lose more units. Very big Bertha shot, but... Still, that's... Doesn't matter all that much. Does the trick. I mean, they are getting economy, at least for now. Has the Big Bertha tried to deny that? As both of the Big Berthas, there are two, by the way. One firing over in the eastern quarter, and the other one trying to fire into the center of the map, trying to just take out everything that Flipsip has built in the center. But Flipsip actually is starting to catch up. Only, well, down by half. It's still down by 20,000 metal. Like, this army... This army here is the difference. As in, Lowry has as much of an army as Flipsip, plus what I've selected right now. That is the disparity. Now, Flipstep, knowing this, might decide just to nuke the army directly. And not even bother with where the anti-nuke is, because the anti-nuke has been set up. It's up, it can protect. I'm not sure exactly where it can protect, but it can protect. And it is going to be able to deal with basically everything. At least everything in the main base. It deals with two it can deal with up to two nukes at once, I believe. So one at a time is fine, two at a time is a little bit difficult. Three or more at a time is too much. You need more than one anti-nuke. However, I don't believe this army is actually covered by the anti-nuke. So if a nuke hits this army directly, that's going to be a lot of damage. And Lowry trying to build more and more pylons, setting up their overdrive grid. This is what they really want. However, they're still behind. Okay, sort of behind. They're even from time to time, dependent on reclaim. But yeah, they're more or less... Well... Okay, let's call it equal, because they are jumping up from below to ahead. And now they're pushing in. Now they're going to be ahead, because Slipsip losing a lot of their military. Even with the DDM here, it's not a whole lot, which just builds as well. Yeah, this is a bit chaotic, I'm afraid. That's what happens in CCR. This fight should be able to tear apart most of the area here, but... Ultimatum usage... Does not actually do much. However, the Dante should be able to deal a bit more damage. Getting rid of most of this army would actually equalize pretty much everything. But this Dante, if that dies... But it won't, because nice use of a Thunderbird here. Well, it will still die. But at least the use of the Thunderbird means that most of these units cannot attack. But the Funnel Web will not be up in time. The Funnel Web looks to be going down. Yeah, the Reapers will destroy it. Reapers destroy the Strider Hub. The Funnel Web 
Only 17 seconds before it's up and running, but it unfortunately cannot go. Oh, was that a clutch? I think that might have been a clutch completion play. Yeah, it looks like it. This is oh, actually no, not quite. No, the caretaker also disarmed. So unfortunately, the funnel web not able to be finished by that caretaker, but still able to be finished. Lowry's forces avoiding it completely. That funnel web is able to get off the ground. Very clutch play, but it worked. And this, the silencer here does not yet have any stockpile. Very nearly done, though. It'll be about 30 seconds before it's done. And at the same time, we have... Same time as this attack here. The funnel web is now up, getting repaired. But funnel web coming in from Lowry as well. Answering funnel web with funnel web. And the eastern corridor has been fully reclaimed, but also fully destroyed. Lowry having destroyed that with the Bertha. And the one downside of the big Bertha is that it does not seem to leave wreckage. So it does mean that if you're losing units to a big Bertha in enemy territory, you're in a better position than you would have been otherwise. Although it does of course mean that if you lose your units in your own territory, you can't reclaim them if they're killed by the Bertha. They're just, they're gone. Still, Calypso doing a pretty decent job getting Lowry into a corner, but did not flank. If they had flanked, I think this would have gone a lot better. Still did a decent job, still destroyed a lot of their forces. But Lowry able to get away, able to repair most of these Reapers, and given that these Reapers are all really damaged. I mean, just... None of them have anywhere near full health. They're gonna get repaired. Uh, three of them are gonna get repaired. And that's a lot of value for Lowry. Those three Reapers were very nearly dead, and they did not die. That is value. So Lowry haven't gotten their... They have their funnel web up, as does Flipstip. Two funnel webs up, and this funnel web is... Looks like it's fully repaired. Yes, it is indeed fully repaired. And now Flipstep trying to reclaim the center area. He needs to repeal these metal extractors, but mostly going to focus on reclaim. Getting back up to their over 200 metal. Now they're only at 160 metal. How many caretakers are there on the field right now? 50 caretakers in total on the field between both players. Looks like it's about even as well. And a silencer. Whoa. Hang on a sec. Silence are fired. Where did that hit? Maybe it hasn't hit yet. Unless the anti-nuke destroyed it. I do not see where the silencer fired, because the silencer clearly fired off a shot. Anyway. I assume it fired off a shot during the assault and got hit by the anti-nuke. Anyway. We're going to have to wait another minute and a half or so before that gets built up again. But for now we have Funnel Web Wars. Funnel Web versus Funnel Web. And this is on the latest version, which I believe has some Funnel Web nerfs, but not many. They are still a very powerful strider on their own. With the drones and with their shields. And despite that, the Bertha is still dealing a lot of damage to the shields here. Trying to get rid of the Funnel Web, which is not moving to try to dodge anything. It's just, it's standing there, being a drone platform. Not getting hit by the Brig Bertha, though. Thanks to the Big Bertha's deviations, but it is... It needs to advance a bit. Actually, surprisingly, it's still being supported by Scorchers. Flipstep has still been going for Scorchers all this time. While Lowry has gone for very heavy units, Flipstep is continuing to light units, which I find a little surprising. And Lowry, on the other hand, is attacking directly with these... Well, it's trying to attack, but it is right in the middle of an anti-air force. Well, air force and anti-air force, so the drones do not last long, as opposed to Flipstep's drones, which have been lasting a decently long time. I mean, they are going down fairly quickly, but they have been lasting decently long. Not as much in the way of anti-air nearby. But yeah, once again, actually, Lowry appears to be pushing the midline further in. Flipstep can't easily take this area over here, which is a strong area that they, well, historically had. However, the western defender nest has long since been destroyed, and Flipstep looked to be trying to take advantage of this. They can push back this particular Stardust, and they're going to avoid it completely. Avoid that completely and start harassing around the back. That's going to be extremely useful. Because, like I said, each of these is about plus five. One melee extractor down, although admittedly plus five out of plus 154 is not particularly notable, but still, it's something. And more Thunderbird strikes to push back Lowry. Flipstep, regardless, is so far behind. I am surprised, given the economic... Sorry, not economic disparity. The military disparity, mostly because Flipstep's been losing a lot of units. How Flipstep has been staying in, but I think it's just that Flipstep has been losing a lot of units. That's really what it comes down to. 
They've been losing more than they've been killing, but they've been able to rebuild them faster than Lowry can take advantage of it. And Lowry is playing really safe. They're trying to avoid losing any units at all. And another funnel web has been built. And Singularity is being built as well for Lowry, because why not? And now we have another... Okay, there we go. Now we're going for the shot. And the shot is going to be fired at the army. Flips to firing a nuke off at Lowry's army. We are going to have Shiny, and I don't think the Anti-Nuke can do anything about it. Not entirely sure, though. Really, I don't know the Anti-Nuke ranges. I don't know why I can't see it. Nope, Anti-Nuke cannot do anything about this. This is going to destroy the army directly right now. Down goes Lowry's army, tearing apart about 10,000 metal worth of army in an instant. And blowing a massive hole in Lowry's territory, and also this big crater that's going to be harder to pathfind into. <laughs> They're not much harder. Actually, it looks like... Is it even a crater at all? No, it's not a crater at all. It's... It wasn't... There was no deformation. Regardless, massive blow by Flipstip. Getting rid of a huge chunk of Lowry's army. Just... Out of the blue. Nicely done. So... With that, Lowry is going to be... Still way ahead. They're still ahead by a factor of two. They still have a massive army. And Flipstip still has to deal with it as efficiently as possible. But they have broken a bit of a hole. And can at least deal a fair amount of damage. And what did survive was heavily damaged. Like these three Goliaths, that should totally have yeah, 6,600 in total. So Lowry did take a lot of damage from that, but they still have a lot more built up. I mean, they still have twice the army, despite having lost about 10,000 metal worth of army. There is plenty left. However, yet another Goliath does go down. And these, these Goliaths are kind of the bread and butter of Lowry's army at the moment. And every one of them that goes down, that's 12,000 health. That's a lot of health that could have been repaired. And wasn't. And another nuke just about ready. Flips are not sure where they're going to fire that, but keep an eye on that one. Always keep an eye on the silencer. Big things like that. And Screamer as well, just to make sure that air control is, once again, Lowry's. Although, honestly, air is pretty much completely impossible to do anything with. With outside of their own territories, players are not going to survive very long with air. And these big berths, though, have been hammering consistently. Not much that they can be done about it either, other than building a retaliatory big berth, which I don't think Flipsips wants to do. They have their nuke silo, that's about it. The, if they're not careful, though, the berth that can hit the sing Oh, well, it <laughs> smashes the caretakers, and hit the Singularity Reactor, that's going to be a problem. If it hits the Singularity Reactor, the entire area here is going to be annihilated. Every single one of these is enough... It should explode. If it hits this one, it'll blow up this entire area, destroying the main base as if it was nuked twice. This one here, I don't know if it'd be close enough, and the silencer, I think, would not survive. So yeah, that big burst is gonna... That's gonna be worth its weight in gold if it ends up killing something. And at the same time, Lowry has so much overdrive that they have 12.3 here. Slightly disconnected, though. They need to reconnect. If they reconnect, they're gonna have even more metal coming in. And at this point... A thousand energy. It actually happened. Over a thousand energy for a single player. I'm going to have to switch this to four at some point. Like maybe for the next game. I'm going to switch this to four just to make sure that this never happens again. I did not expect that to happen. But yes, we have four digits worth of energy. From Lowry. Of course, that's why there's the orange grid with plus 13 on a plus two. Like a six-fold increase. Anyway, for the most part, though, it looks like this side of the map is fairly sedate. I think that Flipstep might be just trying to set up a couple nukes so they can overwhelm the anti-nuke system. Try to overwhelm it and then annihilate it from there. If they do that, they should be able to tear apart this base. If they hit that directly. And the funnel webs, as well, moving forward as quickly as they can. Though, admittedly, funnel webs are a very defensive unit. They have the drones, they have the shields, but they aren't great at direct assault. However, the drones are extremely difficult to deal with, and they are basically free. So ultimately, these flip these funnel webs should be able to just tear apart everything with the drones, given enough time. Though whether I'm going to have that, it's hard to say. How and yet another anti nuke. Actually, there are two anti nukes because Lowry's not sure exactly where they're going to be hit, and that is absolutely fine because this anti nuke would have saved the army if it had been built sooner. 
If Flipsip destroys that, however, it will be very different. But I think Flipsip's going to have to just completely settle for non-nuke solutions. At least for now. At least until they get about four nukes or so, and they can actually directly hit Lowry, like past the anti-nukes, they won't be able to get past the anti-nukes. They just won't. However, the Scorcher's coming in here. The Scorcher wants to get rid of the anti-nuke. That's going to go for it. And is it going to make it? I think it will. Yes, that one anti-nuke does go down. One anti-nuke is down. The other anti-nuke is pretty much if... I think if Lowry is going to lose that, they're going to probably lose the game. There's so much defense around. I mean, there's the anti-nuke. There's a bunch of units. There's quite a few Lotuses. If a single Raider Force would kill that anti-nuke, that, that would probably be able to kill far more than just the anti-nuke. However, the Singularity Reactor is one shot away from being killed. Very dangerous position. It's kind of... Oof. So close. That was just Splash. Let's double check Big Bertha damage. Yeah, 2,000 damage. That was one hit away. It just got... It was grazed by it. It was the only reason it didn't completely blow up and annihilate Lowry's... Or sorry, annihilate Flipsip's base. But that... That Singularity Reactor is extremely risky. And Flipsip... I'm sure they might know... They must know it. Also, just Making absolutely sure this is disarmed. <laughs> Trying to annihilate this army as best as possible. But yeah, every single Bertha shot that comes in... While the Singularity Reactors are below 2,000 health, is basically potentially one shot away from death. Like, RNG away from death. That's... that's what it is. Honestly, the Singularity Reactor distance here is way too small. I wish you could see the explosion radius, but yes. This... They are way too close for comfort. Flipsip has literally been lucky that the Bertha has not hit that Singularity Reactor when it was damaged and destroy their entire base. Because it would kill the Singularity Reactor, it would kill the Pylons, it would kill the Fusion, which would be smaller like, tactical nuke size explosions, these would be strategic nuke size explosions. Speaking of which, there's two right now. This one might be destroyed, I'm not entirely sure. Most of the characters would die. I think the factors would go down pretty quick. That entire area would be dead. Anyway, the center of the map, we do have Flipstep pushing louder back, and Flipstep almost getting to par with military. They are almost at parity. Not quite, but almost. And where's the second Oh, another anti nuke is being built up. It's been started up and not being attacked right now. What the heck said that? Oh, energy. I see. The piling got destroyed. So yeah, Flipstep pushing on the west side, pushing on the east side, still pushing far. Pushing forward very hard. And they should have enough nukes in a couple of minutes. Not even a minute. In. Well, a couple of minutes, yes, but. You should have enough nukes within the next 20 seconds or so to, to be able to overwhelm the anti nuke, if I'm not mistaken. And. Lowry now going for the silencer of their own. Lowry goes for it, and Flipstip at the same time is pushing in. They're still pushing hard in the center. But Flipstip is not well prepared. They do not have any anti nukes up. They are not expecting a nuke to come in. I think they're expecting they're just going to be able to push forward directly, and that'll be it. And Bertha's continue to attack, continue to attack. This this Singularity Reactor is in a very tight spot. Like, two shots away from death, but they're very close two shots. And a catapult from Flipsta, because why not? Actually, a lot of artillery coming in here. A lot of Wolverines and catapults just trying to make sure that this area here in the center, the contested area, remains contested. Making it that much harder for Lavery to push forward. The Flipsta... They have not been able to push forward very hard themselves. And Lowry, yet, yet again, is another large army. But this this time, this large army is... Well, actually, it's still the difference between the two of them. And as Flipstep just loses both of those funnel webs, while it does cause a lot of damage to be dealt to Lowry's forces, it's not enough to make that disparity go away. In fact, the disparity has just become worse once again for the same reason as it always has. And another shot comes in here, does not hit the Singularity Reactor, but there is this one Singularity Reactor in a very risky position. This is very dangerous. Like I said, these Berthas... Honestly, I'm a bit surprised. What I'm surprised by is the lack of an Aspis, or an Aegis. I think Aegis is the... Yeah, Aegis is the one that's the static one. Here it is. I'm surprised by the lack of an Aegis. Because an Aegis... Put it right here, put a few of them around there, and that'll just give that much more time the big Berthas have to hit. I mean, they don't have to be lucky for the first few hits to kill the shields, but after that, the shields can recharge. 
and you have more shields. And it basically just gives the extra health to the singularity reactors which need it because right now these singularity reactors are an Achilles heel. Lowry has just not been able to completely stab it. They've grazed it several times and it's healed up in the process, but if they can successfully stab that Achilles heel, Blipstib is going to have nothing left. And, well, Bantha for good measure, because why not? I don't think I've ever seen this unit, to be quite honest. I'm not even sure, what is this D-gun anyway? Lightning cannon, EMP missiles from the looks of it. And getting rid of yet again, getting rid of the anti-nuke, because why not? And another nuke silo for, wow, three nuke silos for Lowry. I'm sorry, two nuke silos for Lowry, one for Flipstip, which has not been used in the last while. I might be waiting for four missiles, not totally sure. And Bantha continuing to move in. This is, by the way, the second most powerful Strider. The most powerful being the de- I think it's the detriment. I'm not entirely sure. I want to say the detriment. It's like a giant Dante. Because I'm fairly certain that's the one that's the absolute most expensive. I, I'd have to double check. But I want to make sure to see what's going on with this Bantha. EMP missling around and making sure that these can't do much. But unfortunately, that did not do enough. Not hit the units it needed to hit. And this Bantha appears to be going down. Yes, it's going to try to hit what it can. But unfortunately, it's not enough. And I... Does it go up in smoke? We'll find out. How much smoke does it go up in? Not very much. It's a very small explosion. Unlike, say, an ultimatum, which has a nuke explosion. And it was, in fact, a detriment. 2,400... Sorry, 24,000 metal investment. And that gets you a massive force. And Scorch is coming in here. All disarmed, but do hit the, the missile silo, or get to the missile silo, and get to the singularity reactors. Lowry forced to retreat from what would have been the game-winning blow had those had those killed them. Had these Scorchers killed the Singularity Reactor, that would have done it. However, they were they were stopped by Thunderbirds. The power of Thunderbirds completely annihilated that Scorcher attack. Yeah, that Scorcher attack. And that's forcing Lowry to go for Frontal Assault and more Anti-Nukes. In fact, yeah, two from the front. A bit surprised though, this is not the best read because Lowry does have nukes. I think what's I think what Flipsip is trying to do is to have the anti-nukes in front so have more time to hit with their missiles, although one of them has just died, but then more time to hit with their missiles rather than just having them right next to their target. And it looks like Well, that's the one shot. There's a second shot coming out. Like I said, the thing is trying to overwhelm, but these aren't at once. Not sure how it's gonna work. But it's going for the army instead, and Whoa! Anti nuke gets it right in the right in the sky. Doesn't manage to do much. The second nuke coming in here, but yet again more anti nuke shots coming on. And once again, Lowry's anti nuke successfully plays missile command. They're going to be seeing a lot of that from these nukes. Like these nukes are not going to be doing anything. Yet another successful missile command play. This anti nuke needs to go. So this is what this is what Flipstep is relying on. The anti-nukes are going to hit Lowry's nukes well before Lowry's nukes get close, thus destroying them. But that, of course, kind of relies on... By the way, there's no nukes left. Calypso has no nukes left. They have no silencers other than the ones that they had already built. Lowry, however, has three. They can overwhelm. They can fire at once. They can overwhelm an anti-nuke system. And this anti-nuke system is the one that stopped it. So yeah, having it in front is fine. Having it in front just means that the missile gets hit sooner. Buys a little bit of time. So there's nothing wrong with Flipstep having it here. And... Further attacks on the west side, though. Lowry is taking the west side once again. They always kind of had that. Flipstep kind of lost the eastern side. They still have a bit past the midline, but... Yeah, there's no easy way to attack from here. I almost would think a detriment would be the way to go, to be quite honest, given the sheer amount of economy that both players have. I mean, it would take a while. It would take probably about two minutes. No, not two minutes. What am I saying? 24,000. On 200 metal, if everything's being pushed into it, at 24,000 metal a pop, that would end up being about two minutes. 
Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it would take two minutes to finish a detriment right now. At the cost of, like, three funnel webs. So if these funnel webs can stay alive, then it'd be worth it to get a detriment. Because why not? Oh, and in case you're wondering about the FPS right now, the game itself is actually running about 20 FPS, so if it seems uncharacteristically low, that's because this game has so many units that it's just starting to chug already for me. So don't worry, if you're watching on stream or watching on the YouTube, the frame rate's low because the frame rate's just low. It, it's just, it's gotten that low. Even zoomed out, it's still about 20 or so. The simulation can take a lot of time. It takes a lot of CPU time to do the simulation, and that's... That's a thing. When you have this many units, I mean, there's hundreds of units. 1,000 or more energy... How much energy is there? I, I'm sorry, I didn't want to ever do this again, but I kind of have to. Income width. Still, Hokomoko's change was very useful. Thank you for that, Hokomoko, once again. 1685 energy, so energy is double, military is one and a half times, although it's going to become double pretty soon once these funnel webs are dead. And, although killing the funnel webs does destroy all of the scorchers. And I think Lowry's is pushing in for the kill. They're going to be firing off all their nukes pretty quick. I think once they get nukes in every silo, they're going to fire it. So it'll be about... What if I, yeah, it'll be about a minute and a half. So give it a minute and a half, and Lowry's going to fire off all the nukes. And the anti-nuke, unless the anti-nuke is killed right now, which it it isn't going to be. Clutch play, stopping the Goliath. Nope, not even then. Nope, not even then. The Goliath still killed the anti-nuke. Lowry still has free reign to start firing. Not sure if they know it yet, but they do. That was the only anti-nuke left. And a detriment is indeed what's being built. Flipsip is indeed going for it. It's actually going to take a bit longer than I expected. Or maybe not. Oh yeah, it is. There's not 200 build power. There is potential. The minimum it could take is about two minutes. It's actually going to take about five minutes. Which, incidentally, is about three and a half minutes too many. Given that this nuke style is about to fill up, and that they've just been fired, actually. Yep, two nukes are being fired, and no anti-nuke in the way. That is going to be death. Right in the middle of the main base, right in the Singularity Reactors, annihilating all the Singularity Reactors and everything. Everything in Flipsta's base just died. In an instant. Down to 10 energy from 700-something. Yeah. The only thing left is what was at the front, and that includes the detriment. The detriment was destroyed, too. That was... That's what would have happened had the Bertha hit. Had the Bertha gotten lucky, that would have happened. Had the Scorchers gotten in, that would have happened. That's what would have happened, because the Singularity Reactors are that close to each other. But then, two nukes. Why not? See, an anti-nuke further back would have kept Flipstip alive just that much longer. But yeah. Multiple, multiple silencers probably would have been the better option at that point. Like two or three of them. Even with the anti-nukes, Lowry would have still lost their main base. But instead, Flipstip loses theirs. So hope you enjoyed that. That was... That was a game. That was a very long game. That was an hour of game. Oh, shit. Oh, crap. They've been dropping frames? What? Ah, great. Well, I hope that didn't affect the recording. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm gonna have to... If you're gonna do any more, I'm gonna restart the stream. But I don't think I'm gonna do any more tonight. I think it might be one. I'll do... Maybe one more? I thought there was one that was... I don't mentioned. Well, anyway, it looks like I'm gonna have to stop the stream anyway, so one sec.